people. Hello, Matt. Thank you very much. OK, and so now I'll just officially say that the meeting is being recorded and transcripted. So. Mike, we can't hear you. Mike. Chairman Gann, you were. Say that again. We couldn't hear you before. Um, Councilwoman Evelyn Bryant Ward, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. May we all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the, to flag the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is review of the minutes. Have all the commissioners had the opportunity to review it? Um, assuming that you have, are there any questions or comments on the minutes from the previous meeting? No questions. Hearing none, can I uh, entertain a motion for approval? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as stated. I second and, the motion. And um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the, the minutes approved unanimously. Uh, the next item is we have a public hearing. And so, Janine, I'm going to refer to you since we cannot hear Kelly. Typically, we go to Danielle to uh, read the rules of, of a public hearing. Should I call you to do that or shall I do it? I would be happy to if you'd like me to. Tim again. Yes. Before we get started, I would like to note for the record that I recuse myself from um, this public hearing. Uh, there are two public hearings, uh, the, the hospital and then um, 10 4 11 La Plata Road. Three, item 3.2, the hospital campus zone. Can't hear you, Chairman Gann. I'm being told my speakers. Can you hear me? Yes. Now. OK. Um, Evelyn, are you recusing yourself from the hospital? Yes. How about the uh, La Plata Road? No. OK. OK. So Janine, just for process purposes, that leaves us with two people. Is that sufficient for a quorum? Uh, yes. So the, well, you you have a quorum um, because there's three members present. So in the past, as long as there was a quorum present, we could proceed. Gotcha. And go from there. So Good. if you'd like, I can now read the public hearing procedures for the record. Thank you. Uh, so the Town of the Plata virtual public hearing uh, will be conducted in the following manner. At the discretion of the chairman, speakers uh, may comment um, and be limited to three minutes. If you wish to speak for the record, you must announce your name when joining the virtual meeting and state that you intend to speak during the hearing. At this point, we have not received anyone um, asking to speak. Um, keep your phone audio muted until called to speak. The meeting manager will add your name to the speakers list. Written documents for the record should be emailed to myself, the director of planning, who will present them to the chair prior to the meeting and opening of the hearing. And at this point, we have not received any written comments on either public hearings tonight. Um, and then any questions uh, should be submitted uh, for the record to myself, Janine Harrington, Director of Planning, prior to the close of the record uh, by phone at 301-363-0742 um, or by email would be the best option, jharrington at townofplata.org. Uh, so there will be the call to order uh, review of procedures, which are, we are doing now. 
um, review of public notices. Uh, so we do have verification that both of these public hearings were advertised in the October. I go back and double check myself. Um, where do we have those? The October 8th. Which, which days did we post those on? I have them right here. Uh, they were published in the October 15th and October 22nd Southern Maryland Independent uh, Newspaper Publishings. Um, I'll be I will then go into recommendations of summary of staff report and staff recommendation, um, applicant test presentation and testimony if applicable, questions by the Planning Commission, written documents will be entered into the record. Um, any speakers who are signed up are called on by the chairman and may be limited to three minutes. Additional questions by the Planning Commission and the applicant can provide a closing statement where applicable. And once the hearing is concluded, the Planning Commission will not hear further comments or questions during the meeting. If the record is kept open for a specific number of days, written comments should be submitted by the deadline to the attention of Director of, Herring or Director of Planning, Janine Harrington. Um, any comments received following the close of the record will not be considered. And that concludes the procedures. Thank you, Director Harrington, for covering uh, the procedures. So uh, the first item under the um, uh, public hearing will be um, the zoning text amendment for the hospital campus zone. And um, so we would start with uh, the summary of the staff report. Back to you, Director Harrington. Thank you, Chairman Yen. Uh, so for the host zoning, um, hospital zoning text amendment, uh, this is pursuant to section 191-61.B of the town code for a zoning text amendment and subsequent zoning map amendment um, for the University of Maryland Charles Regional Medical Center uh, for a hospital campus zone, which is in accordance with the 2020 comprehensive plan. Uh, there have been, uh, this was previously reviewed by the Planning Commission um, and that uh, included few uh, conditions of approval, uh, which was to remove fast food restaurants, to create actual guidelines, to create a common sign plan, and to replace the master sign plan, and to show a buffer yard landscape plan. Um, all four of those have been addressed and are attached to the agenda um, as a as an update to the previous review. Uh, so. With that, everything else should remain about the same. They did update the purpose and intent as uh, directed by staff and by previous reviews. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over to you, Mike. Okay, thank you very much. Um, at this point, I would turn it over to the applicant for any presentation. Uh, would that be you, Steve Scott? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, good evening. Uh, Steve Scott on behalf of the uh, the hospital and with me is of course uh, Matthew Martin. Um, we don't have a formal presentation this evening. This is as uh, Madam uh, Planning Director indicated something that we've been working with the uh, town government town staff uh, on for uh, quite a long time. It's been um, um, something that uh, first needed to be incorporated into the uh, 2020 comprehensive land land use plan. Um, and of course that comp plan makes reference to the fact that a hospital campus zone will be uh, um, developed and, uh, and adopted by the town um, uh, once the comprehensive plan was put in place. So this is really a follow up to the uh, comprehensive land use plan and a, sort of an implementation of the, uh, the intent that was uh, demonstrated in the comp plan. As Director Harrington indicated, um, we've addressed um, the four items that were included on the staff report and that we uh, 
discussed in the prior work session on this particular ZTA. I think it was on September 7th is when we had that work session. Um, and um, noteworthy, of course, is that we've uh, included a, um, a master sign plan and a um, more specific um, and detailed uh, set of design guidelines. Um, and of course, those will go in front of the design review board. Uh, we're scheduled for uh, uh, November 10th at 9 o'clock on that, on those things with the design review board. And what we're looking for here, of course, is a uh, recommendation of the Planning Commission to send this on to the um, mayor and town council with a, of course, we're looking for a positive recommendation. Um, I think that um, if if we were to summarize this this presentation or this this zoning text amendment, I think that we would say that um, we're looking to um, maintain or implement some use uh, flexibility in a very finite hospital campus. Um, the hospital has uh, indicated that it won't grow its land holdings. Uh, beyond where they exist right now into the residential areas to the south and east um, of the uh, of the current campus. Um, what the hospital owns now is currently zoned uh, a combination of central business or CB and uh, residential R8. Um, and there are a number of different um, requirements and design guidelines and those kind of things in the CB and the R8 zone. So we're looking to uh, provide for uniformity and flexibility within the campus uh, while at the same time kind of preserving the feel of the campus and um, and uh, preserving the attractiveness and and, uh, and the usability of the property. Um, so I think that's uh, that's the general gist of it. We're certainly available here this evening to answer any questions and uh, address any additional issues the, the commission members may have. Okay, Mr. Scott, thank you very much for that. Are there any questions from Planning Commission members? Uh, this is John Mudd. One quick question with regard to uh, buffer plans. I note in the text of the amendment, there's a very specific reference to not requiring interior landscaping. Yet, yet at the same time, when you look at the cover page, of your architectural standard package to me is a prime example of what interior landscaping gives to a project. So my hope would be that that's really maybe a typo or a, it, it, but it seems to be fairly definitive that you won't do interior landscaping. What I would suggest is that to meet town ordinance requirements uh, is probably going to be a necessity uh, and just want to get, get that clarified if I can. I believe what happened there, um, uh, Mr. Mudd and, and Director Harrington can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, the text has not caught up with the rest of the proceeding, and that is the, the buffer management plan and the uh, design guidelines. And mm -hmm. I think that may be because Madam Clark is out on the sick leave. Sure. Uh, we certainly intend for the text to, to catch up with uh, with what we're presenting here and the intent of, of the uh, of the CTA. All right. Well, I appreciate you clarifying that, and that's that's a reassurance to me. Uh, overall, the buffer plan I think looks good. Uh, there's some areas where there's a minimal 10 foot uh, typical parking lot type strip. Uh, if there's any way to improve those in the future, uh, but I would not at this point require any changes to the, the plan that you provided. The signage plan is, is nicely done. It, it's pretty succinct. It's pretty brief. Um, uh, but at the same time, uh, continuity and, and sense of purpose uh, is the key there. Uh, it's a unique site and that you need visibility. You need directional signage because there's a, all sorts of operations going on, emergency services and the like. Uh, so it, it's, it'll be a, a crucial facet. And obviously, if it can be uh, attractive and uniform, that, that's the key. Uh, and finally, the architectural standards, I think you did a pretty good job on that. It's, it's uh, very graphic, well done in terms of the use of brick and the fenestrations and things that you provide. Um, and I'm sure the design review board will, you know, enjoy going through that. Uh, it, it's a little general in nature, um, but at the same time, I think it does portray uh, the image that you're trying to, to proffer here, which is a cohesive looking architecturally 
a unified type of campus. So I, I, I give you high praise for that. Um, Appreciate it. And so anyway, th that really satisfies the three areas I was most concerned with. Appreciate the applicant's diligence in doing that. Uh, and I'm, I'm very satisfied with the net result. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Bryant Ward, do you have any questions or comments? She recused herself, Mike. Oh, that's right. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, I do have one clarification to request. Uh, when I looked at the various drawings, I wasn't sure if the property north of Route 6 that has the buffer bounding the existing neighborhood um, is part of the zone. Is that part of the zone? There's a, a line of, pro, uh, I guess, apartments or professional townhomes there. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, that would be part of the zone that's currently zoned CB. Um, and that is currently owned by the uh, hospital organization and um, was an existing commercial when the hospital acquired the property. It had those uh, office townhomes and it also, if you recall, was the former 7-Eleven uh, site. Right. Okay, that was that's what I concluded, but I wasn't. <clears throat> I was getting confused looking at the various drawings, so. Um, so those are the questions and comments from the commission members. Uh, Janine, you had indicated there were no written documents entered into the record. That is correct. So I will now offer if there is anyone present this evening that would uh, want to make a statement. Now is the time. Please identify uh, your name and affiliation and uh, uh, please hold your comments to three minutes. This is an invitation to anybody. Not hearing anyone speak up, we'll move on to the next. Uh, since there were no comments there, no need to ask planning commissioners for any additional questions or uh, questions or comments. And um, before we close the hearing, uh, Mr. Scott, do you or, or your team have any further comments to make? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have nothing further unless Mr. Martin does. Uh, Mr. Martin, anything further from from you that I might have overlooked or forgotten uh nothing further just a procedural question as to whether or not um where do we go from here in terms of getting it to the uh to the uh, town council okay i think i'll cover that in my next uh paragraph Perfect. sorry I'm getting ahead of the no 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 problem uh that's keeping me on track i appreciate that Thank um you. so at this point i would like to conclude the hearing and it's up to the planning commission to uh uh, I would entertain a motion that this be presented um, in favor of the applicant's request to the town council. Um, John, would you be willing to make a, a motion in that regard? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I would. Um, I therefore make the motion that the Planning Commission recommend approval and movement of the text amendment from our body to the town council for the next step in the process. And I second that emotion, that motion, not emotion. Um, do, John, do you have any further comments to make under I discussion? Do and neither do I. So uh, I take it to a vote. I say yay, John. Yay. OK, so um, I'd also recommend that because we had received no written comments, and no uh, spoken comments at the public hearing that we have no need to keep this open any longer. And so this can go to the next town council. Uh, with that, I think we're done. Janine, check me. Am I? It? Yes, you um, have recommended approval. You have closed the record and you would like to recommend forwarding to the town council for their public hearing and determination. So yes, uh, Mr. Martin, that'll be on staff now, town staff, to um, ensure that we have that scheduled, published, and moving forward. So Great. Mr. Thank Martin, you Mr. Scott, very much. thank you very much for your time. And thank uh, you very much, Mr. Chair. Good no, luck thank you all. Time. We appreciate you. Bye-bye. Okay, so now I'd like to move on to the next public hearing. It's um, 
10411 La Plata Road annexation failed septic. And um, Councilwoman Bryant Ward, you're able to participate in this one. Yes. And so we would start with the. Um, so in this case, Janine, a similar issue. All public notices were done in a timely manner. All the public, yes, they were done on the exact same day as the uh, zoning um, text amendment. So they were published in the Southern Maryland Independent on October 15th and October 22nd. And have we received any written comments? I have not received any written um, or verbal comments. Okay, so then I'd like to go to you for the staff report. Mm -hmm. So for the proposed uh, annexation request, the subject property is located on the Plato Road, just southeast of the intersection of Radio Station Road and the Plato Road. Uh, the property is uh, currently zoned rural residential under the Charles County zoning. They're requesting R21 zoning. Uh, the proposed use is residential. The size of the property is approximately 2.30 acres. Uh, to the north is uh, a residential property zoned R21 that we annexed uh, a few years ago. To the east is rural residential in Charles County. To the south is rural residential in Charles County. And to the west is PDAG, which is the Plan Development Agricopia. So that we received a written request for an annexation by Kevin and Heather Guffrey with a request for R21 zoning on the parcel of land consisting of 2.30 acres, more or less. Um, and as described in the annexation petition, um, ANX-000510-2021. And related exhibits attached here too. The purpose of this public hearing is to hear comments on the proposed zoning request. The applicant is seeking to annex the property into the town due to a failing septic system. Uh, the owners would like the property annexed in to be eligible for sewer and water services. The annexation was submitted to the town on June 30th, 2021, and was reviewed for staff um, by staff for completeness. On uh, August 24th, 2021, the town council held a work session and the draft petition for the annexation was presented. On that same evening, the town council introduced resolution 21-25, for the uh, purposes of authorizing the proposed annexation into the town and subsequently they introduced resolution 21-26 for the purpose of approving the annexation plan for the property. There is no annexation agreement proposed at this time. So staff recommendation at the discretion of the chair, staff gave a brief presentation um, conducting the public hearing relating to the zoning request for the R21 zone. The review and recommendation can be scheduled immediately following the public hearing or the comment period may be kept open and review and recommendations scheduled for the next meeting. And with that, I will turn it back over to you. So I'd like to ask clarification on from a process standpoint. Um, at the end of this public hearing, we would be in a position to entertain a motion to again recommend that the town council uh, uh, adopt this annexation. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Well, the, you're you're recommending the zoning, so it'd be that the planning commission is recommending approval of the R21 zone. Good clarification. We're recommending the zoning. Okay, with that, uh, any questions by uh, planning commission members? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm confused to a degree in that. Um, has Janine indicated that the town council has approved the annexation? No, they uh, introduced the resolution, which is part of the process. The next right. step is to get the planning commission public hearing, and then it will go to the town council for public hearing, and then it will follow up with the actual adoption of the annexation. Okay, all right. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, how close is public water and sewer to this particular property and whose responsibility would it be to extend those facilities to the property? The water and sewer is directly across the road at uh, by Agricopia. It would be on the property owner uh, to extend the water and sewer lines. Part of the reason why um, we do this process and we will be requesting a water and sewer amendment with Charles County 
to enable them to apply for the Bay Restoration Grant funding if they so choose. Uh, that will give them a little bit of relief from any costs relating to the water and sewer connection. And uh, from there, it would be their responsibility to extend the water and sewer lines under La Plata Road to connect into their property. All right, I appreciate that. Any other comments, John? No, um, I'm, I mean, it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor in the sense that I appreciate the fact that they have a failing septic. On the other hand, it feels like it's a piecemeal annexation process where parcel by parcel is joining the town for various reasons. Um, so I'm not sure it makes sense from a comprehensive standpoint. It certainly does provide an option for the property owner in terms of their future use of the site. So uh, again, just comment for, for the purpose. Yes, we do reach out to additional um, adjacent property owners and, and in most cases the uh, property owners themselves reach out to their neighbors to see if anyone else would like to join in on the annexation petition. Uh, we've gotten that a couple times, but it's most uh, most of the time it's, uh, you know, I don't have any issues right now. I don't want to pay town taxes. Have a nice day. Um, right. And we can't force anyone. Um, obviously, we cannot create an enclave. So if it gets to a certain point, um, we will run into some issues. But if everything is OK on that end um, and they need it for their water and sewer, then we generally do accept the request. And if Understood. I could piggyback on your comment, John, uh, when you asked about the, how nearby the water and sewer was, uh, uh, the document also concluded, if I am correct, that we had sufficient uh, supply. For, okay. Yes, for the single um, residential dwelling unit, we do have adequate water and sewer capacity for that property. John, any other comments? No, I think that takes care of it. Evelyn, how about you? Any comments or questions? No, I'm good. Thank you, Mike. OK, I actually jumped the gun. Uh, do we have a representative of the applicant with us this evening? Yes, sir, I am here. OK, um, do you have any presentation or testimony to make? I do not. Um, I just want to thank the the town commission to you know for looking over the annexation process and you know i'm looking I, I was a part of the town when i lived across from the library on route six yeah. um and you know yes my, my septic tank is failing my septic system is failing um i do have plenty of water because i just put a new well in so if that's an issue we can just go with the sewer if that's a problem as well um i would like to do both get it out of the way, get back into the town, not have to worry about this issue in the future. Right, uh, and for the record, could you give us your name, sir? My name is Kevin Jeffrey. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, planning commissioners, any questions or comments of uh, the applicant? Not hearing any. Okay, uh, Janine indicated we had no written record. Is there anyone present this evening that would like to speak up in regard to this uh, uh, application. Not hearing any. Um, I won't go to the Planning Commission for any additional questions or comments. Um, Kevin, do you have any additional closing comments? No, sir, I do not. OK, thank you. So I will conclude this hearing. And um, again, similar to the previous one, since we have no written or spoken comments. Okay, are we all back? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I was lost there for a second. Uh, since we have no spoken or written comments, um, I recommend that we do not extend the comment period and I go to the commissioners for a motion on this matter. Evelyn or John. Chairman Gann. 
I move that we recommend R21 zone um, to the Planning Commission. I mean, to the Town Council. I'll second that motion. Okay, the motion has been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? None here. Okay, all in favor? John? Aye. Evelyn? Aye. Aye for me also. And so the motion carries. And um, the next step will be the, the town council. So thank you very much for your presence here. And uh, we will move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, no longer in public hearing mode. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Okay, matters of discussion. Special exception amendment, Panda Express. Uh, I'm assuming Mr. Scott is still here. I see SS, okay. Um, go to uh, Janine for the staff report on this, please. Okay, so I won't go through everything again um, since we just took this to the September 7th meeting, um, but I will provide the update. At the last meeting, there was concerns over the traffic in the area. Uh, we had noted that there was a traffic impact study that was done as part of the Sonic uh, submission uh, back in 2015. Uh, they subsequently sent in a letter uh, in 2018 with their revised um, plan, uh, noting that the traffic was still the same and that there wasn't any uh, further issues on that. So the Sonic restaurant went out of business towards the end of 2020 and we staff was re, uh, contacted regarding the proposed Panda Express restaurant to occupy the vacant building. Um, and since there was a previous special exception approval that specifically stated Sonic, uh, the uh, special exception resolution needs to be amended to remove Sonic um, so they can proceed forward with their proposal. Uh, they are not proposing any significant changes to the site features, layout, traffic pattern, or parking. Um, the only changes that will be made are relating to the uh, facade, signage, and corporate branding, which is different from Plant Panda Express restaurant, and that will be going to the Design Review Board at the November 10th meeting as well. <coughs> so last um, meeting, we went through the staff comments regarding all of the uh, requirements of the town code and noted that there were a couple um, items that were, were not with um, in compliance with the 2018 zoning code or in the 2020 uh, zoning code amendments. Um, however, they were part of the original approval and since they are not being changed, uh, they are proceeding forward on those items, including the seven foot planting strip. Um, and then we also noted the, the traffic impact study, which is uh, normally a requirement. Um, so for the update, the applicant did submit an updated traffic impact study as requested by the Planning Commission at the September 7th meeting, which was prepared by Lenhart Traffic Consulting on October 16th, 2021. Uh, since all of the impacted roads are under the Maryland State Highway Administration's authority, the consultant used their guidelines for the analysis. And just to summarize some of the analysis that were contained within the report, uh, the Sonic Restaurant and Panda Express both have a lesser impact than the pre-existing gas station. Uh, both the Sonic and Panda Express are projected to have the same traffic impacts as each other based upon the ITE trip generation manual. However, the Panda Express will not open until 10 a.m. and will therefore have no impact on the morning peak hour. The access points have previously been reviewed and approved by the State Highway Administration for the same type of use. The results of the level of service analysis shown on Exhibit 8 revealed that the level of service at US 301 and Maryland Route 6 will remain, will remain uh, substantially, will have no impact in the morning peak hour since it does not open until 10 a.m. The town has also requested the analysis of crash data at the site access points. Uh, three years of crash data was obtained from State Highway Administration from a period of 2018 through 2020 and is obtained in Appendix C. The data shows that there were no crashes at either of the access points during that three year period. As shown in the updated traffic impact analysis, the study intersections will operate at acceptable levels of service 
and proposed uh, conversion to a Panda Express will not have a negative impact on the transportation network compared to any of the previous uses. Therefore, staff maintains our previous position and recommend that the Planning Commission review the traffic impact study and provide a recommendation to the Board of Appeals for the approval of this amendment request. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have of me. Um, and Steve Scott is here if you have any questions of him. Okay, so um, Planning Commission members, any questions for Janine? Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, nothing from me. Okay, so uh, Mr. Scott, uh, you or your team, any um, statements from you as the applicant? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, good evening again for the record. Steve Scott on behalf of the applicant. <clears throat> and we have uh, with us tonight, of course, representatives of the current owners of the property and also of uh, Panda Express. Um, we also have uh, Mike Lenhart of Lenhart Traffic Consulting. Um, and I think uh, uh, Director Harrington did a great job of, uh, of uh, summarizing the traffic impact analysis. Um, if um, the chair and planning commission members will recall, this was, of course, in front of you on September 7th. And um, <clears throat> we had uh, concerns, of course, about traffic and and um, and about uh, the safety of ingress and egress into this site. And I think um, at that time we had testified that we uh, believe that the an updated traffic analysis would indicate that uh, that um, the uh, intersections will operate at acceptable levels and also that there has not been a, a, a degradation in any of the um, um, any of the, the functions of the surrounding road network as a result of this project. Um, the, uh, uh, if, if it pleases the commission, and I guess maybe I'll throw this to Mike Lenhart. Mike, um, of course, you also uh, um, included, as Director Harrington indicated, um, crash uh, data in your traffic impact analysis. Is there, uh, Mike, are there, are there some highlights you want to hit that I think maybe to emphasize from the traffic impact analysis? Yes, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, for the record, Michael Lenhart with Lenhart Traffic Consulting. Uh, and I agree, uh, Steve, I think Janine did a very good job of describing our study. Um, and so I don't want to uh, belabor that issue, but the traffic uh, crash data we did obtain from State Highway Administration. It's all reported accidents um, for a three year period. <clears throat> and that showed that there were zero accidents at the Sonic, uh, the right in right out at Sonic driveway on Route 6 and the right in right out at the Sonic driveway on Route 301 southbound. There were zero accidents at both of those locations. Um, the, the data did show that there were a few minor uh, left turn accidents that occurred at the uh, shopping center uh, on the north side of Route 6 has a full movement driveway that's a few hundred feet to the west of the right in right out access. And the state crash data showed that there were a few minor left turn accidents in and out of that driveway, uh, but no accidents at the Sonic. And I think that's probably uh, attributed to the fact that during the conversion of that property from the gas station to the Sonic, uh, the town expressed concern and the state agreed uh, and restricted the Sonic driveway to a right in. Actually, initially it was a right in only. And uh, where when it was a gas station, it was a full movement access. And so when the Sonic went in, it was it was a right in only initially. And uh, we monitored it and went back to the town and back to the state um, a year or two ago and um, got approval to convert it to a write in and write out. Uh, and that operates well. The state approved it. That is built. And the data shows that there is no, um, no crashes, no um, concerns at that location. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lenhart. Any other comments from uh, your team? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I will uh, we'll rest at that unless um, the Planning Commission has any uh, questions of us. Okay. Any questions from the Planning Commissioners? You know, Mr. Chairman, John Mudd, yeah, I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. 
Um, first off, uh, thank you for the completion of the new study. Uh, you might have considered it unnecessary, but it does meet an ordinance mandate uh, dictated for this type of request. Uh, I don't think it was a wasted effort because I, I found the report to be very intriguing, very interesting. Uh, one thing I will say is that traffic generation rate for a use, which is a lot of the focus of this traffic study, uh, is an important consideration, but it really is a small portion of the overall study and analysis. And I guess that leads to a question for Mr. Linhart on your level of service tables and summary. There are evening peak hours uh, listed as level of service D. And the question is, is the level of service D an acceptable level per state highway? In the evening peak hour? Yes. Yes, uh, so Route 301 at Maryland 6 um, is listed as a level of service D as in dog. Uh, with a critical lane of uh, 1337, that is acceptable. Um, the uh, a D or better is considered acceptable. So A through D um, are acceptable. And again, this conversion from a Sonic to uh, Panda Express, uh, as you indicated, uh, using the ITE trip generation, it, it's really the same land use code. It's a fast food with a drive-through. And so while Practically speaking, it may not generate exactly the same amount. Uh, the standard practice using the ITE trip generation manual indicates that it would. Um, and so that it, it uh, would be basically no change in the evening peak hour from the Sonic. Okay, I appreciate that. And again, I'm not trying to elude that the Sonic or the Panda Express is, is a creating the level of service D. We understand that's the, the massing of those volumes during that time of day, both on 301 and Route 6. Uh, I would assume most of us who've been in through La Plata have been through that intersection in peak hour, uh, and it can be a very busy time. Um, yet the level of service D is really close to the bottom. Uh, the next level is, I guess, a failing rate, and then uh, I'm sure State Highway would look at the intersection and see what they could do to improve things. Uh, another question is, do you know specifically when State Highway installed the plastic bollards along that section of Route 6? Whether that was after the right in right out was completed or was it before? It was uh, before and then they had to replace them when they did the right in right out. So those have been there for quite a while. Okay. That's, that's what I was going to say, but I wasn't certain mm -hmm. on the date. Uh, are, are you aware or is staff aware of the basis under which State Highway decided to place those bollards? Whether were there contributing factors that led them to spend that money and put that traffic <clears throat> control in? So that was part of the um, review and approval previously. Um, there was actually several reiterations of this. When they first did the plans, the, the Planning Commission and Design Review Board, if I remember correctly, did not approve the right out. They only did a right in. When they uh -huh. came back in 2018 and 2019 to do the right in, right out, um, that was one of the conditions to make sure that there were bollards in place. We wanted to have um, more significant um, bollards at that location. However, due to um, tractor trailers and different vehicles going through the area, they did not meet the turning radius, if I recall correctly. Um, so they decided to use those plastic bollards to discourage people um, from turning left if you're going, what is that? West. west, west. Right. Turning left into the, the establishment, uh, but they wanted to make sure that there was um, enough room that if a tractor trailer didn't quite make it when, and you'll see that they have hit those plastic bollards before and they have to replace them. I'm looking at Google Earth uh, historical imagery and it looks like uh, those bollards were probably installed sometime between October of 2017 and April of 2018. That sounds right. Okay. So that's interesting. Janine, you're, you're indicating that the and again, I'm assuming the 
flexible, bendable type of bollards was necessary to accommodate the turning radius of certain vehicles? Yes, you'll, you will see that um, those have to be replaced every now and then because we do have larger trucks uh, that make that right onto uh, Route 6 Port Tobacco Road going that way, and they have hit those before and knocked them over. Right. So those were in place to discourage um, smaller cars, but to still provide that flexibility just in case a larger vehicle went through mm -hmm. uh, and didn't hit a concrete barrier or concrete bollard. Right. What well, almost sounds like it's a geometric problem with that intersection, which is really beyond anybody's scope and really would be a state highway issue to deal with. Yes. Um, touching on the accident data real quick, um, I, I don't recall specifically asking for only accident data at the entrances to the facility. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that the data show that there were no specific accidents related to the entrances, either entrance. <laughs> But what I found interesting is that if you look at the total accident data that you collected for the three year period, it appears there were a total of 99 reported accidents at that intersection and surrounding road roadways. And I guess my question to Mr. Linhart is, are 99 reported accidents in a three year period a common thing or is that a reason to worry? Uh, so when I look at this crash data, uh, and so I worked for State Highway Administration, uh, the District 5 office in Annapolis that oversaw this area, and uh, that was from 1990 through 1998. And uh, on an annual basis, they would do um, crash data analyses of intersections, and, and using this database, they would um, create accident rates at every similar intersection. They put them in buckets and they look at similar buckets right. and they'd them against each other. Uh, and then they'd create um, um, a high accident location listing where that they where they would focus on um, improvements. <clears throat> and uh, so I was quite involved in that. Now it's been over 20 years and the state kind of manages that uh, information fairly tightly, mm -hmm. but when I look at this, this looks like any other intersection, signalized intersection along 301 throughout the entire county where you have um, fairly considerable travel speeds along Route 301 and people are, you know, averaging probably 55, 60 at free flow. And uh, if you're not paying attention and the light goes red, and uh, somebody in front of you jams on their brakes, you're going to have a rear end accident. And so rear end accidents are very common at signalized intersections along these high speed routes. Uh, and if you look at the data, quite a few of these are rear end accidents on Route 301. It's very common. Uh, they also have a number of left turn accidents um, from the main line, northbound or southbound 301, turning left onto Route 6, um, also fairly common. Um, and uh, th then there's a smattering of other types of accidents. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing um, that I would say would be concerning as it relates to this request for the conversion to Panda Express, uh, nor do I see anything that would be out of the ordinary with this type of intersection? Okay. All right. Well, certainly with your background, you know, you're the guy to provide that commentary. So uh, again, numbers are numbers, but when you see 99 reported accidents, I'm just trying to get from you uh, a barometer of, is that normal? Is that a problem? And I think you've answered that very well. So I appreciate you clarifying that. Mr. Mr. Um, Mudd, it keeps, uh, it keeps the attorneys busy. Well, I guess it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is more of a commentary for me, but now, and, and don't get me wrong, uh, th this project will get approved tonight uh, because it has to. Uh, it exists today, and, and I, I recognize that, and, and we see the legal ramifications of that. At the same time, um, to me, the site will continue to create functional difficulties for the adjacent roads and intersections. And that will compete with high volumes of peak hour traffic. Um, 
we've seen it in, in real time and I think it will continue, but it will add friction and competing traffic movements uh, that, that lead to bad decisions from drivers. Um, if we knew how to cure that problem, then, then we would be very successful. Um, but bad driver decisions uh, are the root of a lot of these problems and there's not much we can do to control that. Uh, I would suggest that the applicant uh, enhance the 301 access point with signage if possible. Um, I think if, if this, the site would be well served if people entering the area could see a very distinctive way, you know, here's how you get in essentially. And I would suggest that the 301 entrance is the most functional and the most uh, easily used from all the approaches. Uh, the Route 6 approach, unless you're coming from the west of the county, I don't know how you get in the site from the Route 6 entrances, unless you go up Route 6 and make a U-turn and come back. Um, so again, I, I appreciate the fact that the site is very visible. Um, it, it should be very successful, but I think it is very constrained in terms of its ability to conveniently attract customers. The last thing I would recommend is that the Board of Appeals consider maybe applying a condition of approval that if there are site access operational difficulties in the future, that the applicant will at least look to mitigate or seek to improve the situation if they find themselves having repeated problems. So I think that's just good stewardship. That's good management of the site. Um, so that's really my last suggestion in terms of this particular item. Um, as I said, you know, the, the site needs to move forward. I understand that. I think the whole board does. Um, at the same time, traffic is, is a very serious problem in the town, throughout the county. Um, and, and that's why I, I uh, become concerned. So again, I appreciate the effort on the part of the applicant to provide the study. Thank you, Mr. Linhard, for your expertise. Um, you know, and with that, I will rest. Can't hear you, Mike. You're on mute, Mike. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Bud. Uh, Evelyn, any questions or comments from you? No, I don't have any concerns or questions. I, I don't believe that this site um, can be held responsible for our traffic conditions in the county. They are what they are, and they're going to they're gonna be what they're going to be until something else happens to expand the road. So I um, have no comments, and I am not convinced that they will contribute in any way to um, further traffic issues that we have. Okay, that's a great segue to uh, reminding us uh, just what we're asked to do, and that is um, to uh, recommend approval or not of the special exception amendment as presented to remove Sonic from the resolution. So can I entertain a motion, please, from one of you? Chairman Gann? Yes. I recommend to the Board of Appeals to approve the special exception amendment request as presented to remove Sonic from the resolution. And John, do you second? Second. Thank you very much. All in favor say aye. 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 And aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve and Michael, thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, particularly in light of the fact that you returned. Um, uh, did a lot of work in the meantime, so thank you very much for that. Thank you, thank Mr. you. Commissioner. Have a good okay, evening. The next item on the agenda is uh, zoning map error, West Hawthorne Road. Director Harrington, staff report on that, please. Yes, I seem to be finding errors as I go forward with uh, um, some of our zoning map properties. Uh, so in October 2021, um, I was contacted about a zoning verification of parcel 69 located along West Hawthorne Road, Route 225, and that parcel extends all the way down to Oriole Lane. Uh, on the official 2020 map, the parcel is zoned R10. However, it was zoned commercial highway on the 2011 map and maps going back um, to 1986. Um, somewhere between uh, during the 2018 zoning map amendment, 
Um, when we did our zoning code update, the property was changed to R10. I was unable to find any commentary notes uh, or any verification as to why that change was made. Uh, so I am assuming that that was a mapping error um, and should be rezoned to a uh, commercial highway. So staff is recommending the Planning Commission review the proposed zoning map change and provide comments and or recommendation to proceed to the Town Council uh, so we can move forward with a official zoning map amendment. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'd like to move to a recommendation or not to change the zoning uh, to the CH. Evelyn or John? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we uh, accept staff recommendation and approve the uh, revision to the zoning map based on the original mistake. Thank you. <clears throat> second Evelyn, the motion. Would you care to second? I second, <laughs> I second the motion. Thank you very much. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Okay, now we're into matters of information. Planning Department, again, Janine, back to you. I feel like I've been talking quite a bit. Um, so for Planning Department updates uh, for this month, uh, we have a few upcoming projects heading your way. Uh, we have 109 Charles Street for a major site plan. Rosewick Corner Apartments, uh, they are revising the major site plan uh, that was taken to the Planning Commission previously. Uh, townhomes at Potomac Square for a major subdivision. Um, this is also referred to as Mallard's Pond. Uh, Magnolia Gardens for a major site plan, as well as Heritage Green Parcel A and Heritage Green Parcel O. And um, I will note that the Heritage Green Development Rights and Responsibilities Agreement was approved by the Charles County Commissioners as well as the Town Council. So they have come to that conclusion on the school seats and uh, some of the traffic issues. So I will be proposing some updates to the conditions as we proceed into the next neighborhood, whichever one it may be. Uh, for our development review, we had 16 submissions, five for design review board, three forest conservation plans, two major site plans, two minor site plans, one major subdivision, two stormwater management plans, one zoning confirmation, and we had 10 resubmissions altogether. We did not hold any pre-construction meetings over the past month. Uh, so for some updates, still working through, I, I think my to-do list just keeps getting bigger and I'm, I haven't been able to kind of cross these things off my list yet, but I'm working on it. Um, so I'm still trying to get together a development review manual and permit preparation manual similar to what Charles County has. Uh, we've really updated our processes and we're utilizing outside um, agencies to do some of our reviews. So I want to make sure that there's clarification as to what needs to be submitted, what the timing is, um, fees, those types of things. Uh, currently we are revising the design review board process. I took this to the town council. Um, in October, and I will be bringing this to the November 10th Design Review Board meeting, uh, really looking at uh, creating items that do not need any approval, items that could do administrative or staff approval, and those that need Design Review Board approval. Um, and that does kind of play into the relationship between the Planning Commission and the Design Review Board, that uh, there are certain items in the past that the Planning Commission and the Design Review Board were both reviewing. Uh, so we've kind of already done some amendments and I'm looking to further revise that. Uh, we also received the grant uh, for the bikeway pedestrian path leading from Rosewick Road going all the way down um, into downtown La Plata. Uh, so we did get that grant. And Brent, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say it was $328,000. Um, but anyway, that's going to be a huge uh, benefit for us moving forward. We are coordinating with Heritage Green on some of the sections that would apply to their project. Um, and then I have a lot of draft code revisions that I'm working on. Uh, so some of these will be uh, for the Planning Commission. Others will be just for the Town Council to approve. 
Uh, so I'm looking at creating a form based code. This is a new one uh, for just the downtown uh, core where we have our um, sustainable communities boundary. Uh, per uh, we actually did a, a comparison of all of our past plans going all the way back to the 2000 vision plan and there have been recommendations to look at a flexible zone in the downtown core to allow for redevelopment to occur. I think that there's been some hurdles in the past, so I'm looking at uh, form based code as a template and an example um, that we can build off of if it does end up being a successful venture. Uh, I've completed the first draft of the sign code amendments, really making it more of um, looking at just the design aspects instead of the content. It's going to be a lot more flexible and hopefully much more clear uh, than the one we currently have. Uh, working on chapter 117 health and sanitation that draft has been completed however we still have some more conversations to have with the town attorney and our keep the plate a beautiful team uh, we're looking since we're now a bird city and a tree city and i don't know what other cities we are yet um, but we really want to promote native plantings we want to pr promote um, people not having to mow in their, their yards if they don't want to however there needs to be a process for that. You know, obviously we don't want people to just let um, noxious weeds and, and um, different plants go wild. So we're looking at native plants that are beneficial to the environment, beneficial to the flora and fauna, as you will. Um, so we're working on a process uh, to allow that. Um, working on an adequate public facilities ordinance. Um, and that will tie into revisions for chapter 173 or zone or subdivision ordinance. Um, those have been bumped up on my priority list uh, since we are starting to see a lot of issues with school seats, traffic, water and sewer. I think that needs to be addressed sooner than, rather than later. Um, so I will be starting on those hopefully on Friday. Um, chapter 170 streets and sidewalks and chapter 186 waters and sewers are really an update to adopt the Charles County standard details and to also take a look at um, some practices on complete streets and other elements that have been in our past uh, plans in our 2020 comprehensive plan. So I am I'm working through those and and hopefully I can get those done uh, in a timely manner. And with that, I think that's all I have unless you have any questions for me. I only have one comment. What are you doing in your spare time? <laughs> I guess the segue to that is uh, a lot of the work that Janine is doing will roll to us one day. So be, be prepared for that. Any other questions or comments for Janine? OK, then uh, Councilwoman Brian Ward, we move to you for a council update. So October will was a super busy month. So if it's a if it was a busy month for town council, it was certainly a busy month for staff. So um, I, that segues way nicely into um, several proclamations that we issued. Um, one being municipal government work month and so we are super super proud of our town staff they are phenomenal and um, um municipal government works month is just awesome to um you know acknowledge them and recognize them for all that they do um, we also issued proclamation for national first responders day we didn't get to present them but we um there was a delay um, by the county but we will do it at a later date and um the proclamation for um trick-or-treat that was such a beautiful Saturday. I don't know if anybody was in the town on Saturday, but it was so wonderful to see all of the families and the children over at the um, farmer's market and just walking through the town, visiting the, the um, businesses. It was such a nice, it just, you know, it made you think what a town should look like with all of the pedestrian traffic. So I was really proud and honored to be a part of that and to see it. Um, we also issued several um, resolutions, one being for the American Rescue Plan. Um, we entered into an agreement with a consultant to make sure that, um, you know, we know how to utilize our funds in a good manner, um, being good stewards over those funds and not getting ourselves into trouble um, for spending on, on things that we shouldn't. So I'm excited to have that level of support for our um, town treasurer. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, come out Sunday for Veterans Day Parade. It's going to be beautiful, so definitely come out and support the town in that. Um, and with that, that's it. Okay. 
John, any questions of Evelyn? No, very thorough. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is there anything else to be brought up for the good of the meeting tonight? Well, I will say that we do have we interviewed two. We interviewed one applicant, two applicants, one declined. One is I will take forward to the um, town council um, next month. Well, this month rather. And uh, we have one that we are considering, but we are um, kind of um, investigating some things before we move forward. So I'm excited for that because both applicants, I think, are excellent. So um, that will kind of round us out. So, Evelyn, any advice for me? Did I scare away the one who decided to decline? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been me, Mike. I was full of information. <laughs> I kept thinking, what did I say? <laughs> well, but it's all good. Whoever of, uh, for us will be for us. You've been doing a great job of rustling up some candidates. Thank you very, very much. Uh, the only one that I rustled up has decided not to apply. So uh, I'll have to keep trying. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you all very much. I declare this meeting adjourned and have a good um, month. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Take care. Everybody take thank care. You,